I am a man who goes his own sweet way Living his life from day to day to day Knowing the going's rough But that if you drink enough You don't give a stuff Hangovers hang from every previous eve Nevertheless, I honestly believe Pulses overwork and ulcers lurk If you care what they think Just have another drink Stop! Once again, we stop the mighty roar of England's countryside and bring you some of the interesting people in the thickets and hedgerows tonight. Hello. Who's this little fellow, then? Mmm. Mmm. It is a cow. And who is this? Ma. Ma. A friendly sheep. And who is that a futtering and rutting in the bosky hedgerow? It is the jolly little dung beetle. Ah! Oh, my good leg. Reuben, Reuben, wake up, Reuben. There be a loony impressionist running his gamut by the septic tank. Ah, booger, where's my goose shooter? Oh, dear. Oh, I think it's the one you used to like on workers' playtime. Cock-a-doodle, ooh. That's not Percy Edwards, the voice of them all, woman. Perhaps it's Arnold Goodman, dear, the voice of most of them. Hello. Someone is throwing a sheep out of an upper window. Ma Thud. It could be Leslie Welsh, dear, the memory man. Hang on. Who won the Cesara Vich in 1894? Goal, Norman St. John Stevens. Backs, Revenal and West. Halfbacks, Freeman, Hardy and Willis. Forward line, Dave D, Dozy, Mick, Beaky and uh, Anthony Titch Barber, the Wizard of the Drivel. Am I right? Surely naught will ever disturb the peace and tranquility of England's green and pleasant land. Emergency, emergency, what's computer say? Trouble on top acre, sheep have short-circuited on 27th floor of meadow block. Ma, 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 ma. Sir, sir, we've got rusty onions in the powdered milk machine. It's been paddling in a hydroelectric suede salmon tank. the great west window which portrayed in gaudy glass the hapless martyrdom of St. Norbert, the patron saint of transvestism, donated by Sir Bernard Finchurch Monsoon in loving memory of his dear wife Arthur, not half the woman his father was, but who went much the same way, let us pray, dear God, if thou canst hear our pleas above the ever-increasing din of thy many dubious gifts, look down upon us with thine especial blessing at this harvest tide. Observe, O Lord, laid out before thee, if thou canst still see thy flock through the murk and gloom that ever gathers round our heads. Observe our sorry offerings, for we have ploughed the fields and scattered quickly to avoid the effects of the crop spraying. But look benignly, Lord, on Mrs. Trubshaw's delightful display of hand-knitted marrows, knitted, dear God, from man-made fibres and a rich variety of green wools. Miss Mott Beetle's artificial tomatoes, made from old newspaper, Quite tasteless bat jam packed with protein and synthetic plastic pips. Let the gaze of thy mighty eye, dear God, settle on farmer Bush's meat analogues and substitutes, culled in thy name from the fungus that abounds about him. Bless too, if thou wilt make so bold, dear Lord, the Major's remarkable bins of white proteinaceous sludge, neath which our festive board will surely shortly groan. Amen. After the hymn, we shall break nylon bread and drink wine wholly untouched by human foot, but dredge, dear Lord, such is thy bounty, by sophisticated scientific processes from mashed hatter's remnants. In the words of the hymnist, bedeck my grave with plastic flowers and weep thine instant tears. I'll not be coffined, I'll be canned, and then I'll keep for years. Go get em, hymnist. Things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. 
all things wise and wonderful, mankind will end them all. Man sprays his crops with chemicals to kill off some disease. It also kills all grass and trees, the birds and all the bees. All things bright and beautiful, mankind will end them all. God made the prairie buffalo, the bison and the meat. But mankind's needed clothing, they're practically extinct. Man likes to go fox hunting, they make such splendid meals. And after lunch he'll slaughter some inoffensive seals. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, mankind will end them all. The great orc and the dodo, the lion and unicorn. For all the good man did, the might as well not have been born. He'll kill off alligators and all the kangaroos. And those that are left over, he'll lock them up in zoos. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, man will destroy them. Bang, crash, and here I am, Elvis Engelman. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Butting in here in the good Lord's half hour with the road show. Latest news from our favourite accident black spots. Is it safe to go out? What's happening on the M4? Who's who on the Rygate Bypass? What is life on the B2070? What does it mean? Why are we here? And what the bloody hell is that woman in the blue mini in the mauve hat thinks she's doing? Christ! Later on, the female unit will be talking to the naked ape about wildlife in our national car parks. And the happy hooker will discuss how to get the most out of your laybys. But now for some accident black spots. A man fell from the new Piccadilly pedestrian way today. He fell from the top of the 790-foot Criterion Tower, trying to jump across Lower Regent Street, the 848-foot Harry Himes Memorial Building. The police described him as a man of 5 foot 2, eyes blue, coochie-coochie-coochie-coo, with a pronounced limp, pronounced slimp, owing to a speech defect sustained in the fall. And now, guys and gals, from the crypt of St. Richard on the Cliff, here is your friend and gods, the Reverend Jesus Q. Freak. Hi, hi, bless you, bless you, and I'll groove, groove, groove with it. You think I'm pretty? Wait till you see the Bishop of Bath and Wells. She's beautiful, beautiful, stacked like a pile of cheddars. I mean, God, when she lays it down, baby, there it stays. Love, love, love. Like the church has got a new image, she's it. I mean, she's a trip in the crypt. Let us pray. All my friends are highly camp. Protect me, Lord, from rising damp. OK, let's dig the Lord's Prayer cats like it is. Hey, Dad, up there in your pad, you are head, give us some bread. We really brought down man about the aggro, but lead us not onto the fuzz. Let it all hang out. That'll be really nice. Oh, man. After the commercial break, Malcolm Muggeridge will ask the damp sleeping bag number 38 in the charts and rising the question, is there a nightlife after death? Now the commercial. What we want is Watney's, Jehovah's Watney's, Jehovah's Witnesses dig Jehovah's Witness. I mean, like we say, Godspeed, and so I should hope after 10 million years. OK, him 709. <laughs> What was the dance and practice dance that did so gratify the Lord that they beatified him for his terps accord? Play me a chord, and I will dance the dance and practice did that caused the cardinals in Rome to say that dancing walls should have and they would suffer no complaint to patron saint. And then went home. They'd searched through history for a holy man who danced, and then they chanced upon the man who's wild cavot. Frustrated all the devil's tricks, and though they were as tight as ticks, they said that when this fighter's kicks, he does a lot of good forgot. Then they all danced, danced, and fighters danced. The world was shaken to the hilt when in a bowler has him kilt with halo at a rakish tilt by us quadrilt. What was the dance and practice and dance and did so gratify the Lord that they be yet by him for his touch at all? Play me a chord. 
Cardinal. And I will dance the dance of my just did that cause the Cardinals in Rome to say that dancing halls should have and they would suffer no complaints of patron saints. And then went home. They'd search through history for a holy man who danced and then they danced upon a man whose wild gavotte. Thus they did all the devil's tricks and though they were as tight as ticks, they said that when this fighter sticks, he does a lot of good for God. Then they all danced and danced and fighters danced The world was shaken to the hills When in a bowl of hat and kills With halo and a rain is chills Fights are squad drills They'd search through history for a holy man Who danced and then they chanced upon a man Whose head to lurch Would give the elves above the creeps And when the whole of mankind sleeps It's guaranteed when fighters leap It's about to liven up the church and so they danced, danced, and fighters danced, and when the saints come dancing in frequently sequined, he's a dream, he is the mainstay on their own formation team. They stand supreme, they always win. Oh, oh invite us, saint of us to the dance! Oh, I wish we had the money to get the treble fixed on the bass guitar, but who wants a bloody new steeple anyway? Royal Army Chaplain's Department. Department, if you would. Look, thank you. Let us pray. Sorry, Major. Oh, Father. Which are in heaven. Hello. Wait for it. Hello. Beat all night. Thank you, Sergeant. I think we can take the rest as red. Let us pray in the approved military fashion for the British colonels, that they may rise up and strike the ungodly. God bless their magnificent coup. Hello, and whose magnificent coup is that? Coo, coo. It is the magnificent coo of the speckled. <laughs> Thank God I've shot Percy Edwards. I thought he were a brace of widgeon. And here is the news. A spokesman for the Ministry of Environment has stated that the level of pollution in London is still rising. Over to Ronald Tavistock on the Air Ministry roof. <laughs> My God, it is rising. Rome and the Pope is taking a firm stand on the birth pill. So far, he has fallen off three times. Here I am again, the gramophone doctor. Cough! <laughs> Cold hands I love beside the Shalimar. Here are some alarming facts and figures concerning your body. These could make you seriously ill. Those of you who are of an elderly or nervous disposition are advised to turn on. Scotch eggs can kill. It has been recommended by the Ministry that a government heath warning should be printed on every Scotch egg, as it is on every cigarette packet. Viz, warning by HM Government, Scotch eggs can damage your health. Admittedly, given the credibility record of the present government, the warning has convinced smokers that cigarettes are obviously the secret of eternal youth, a cure for the common cold, put hair on your palms and lead in your pencil or on your roof or wherever you may most happily choose to have your lead. However, I am here to alarm you. Did you know, for instance, the dangers of the fairy cake? They can lead to fatty degeneration of the heart. Not all of us are lucky enough to have thin hearts. One fairy cake provides the equivalent heart strain to walking three miles with a hat full of pebbles, singing 37 chori of I was born under a wandering Jew. It can shorten the life by 15.7 minutes, by the same token. One cup full of sweet sherry is the equivalent of picking up a horse and throwing it about a foot. 14 inches if it's a gelding. It lessens one's life expectancy by 37 minutes. Again, a cigarette. And there are many of us whose only exercise is coughing, barking like an untrained seal at a wedding. One cigarette. <coughs> Excuse me, I just scrub my lungs. One cigarette has the same effect on the old ticker as a bicycle ride up Lord Snowden against a Force 9 gale with a trouser full of wet cement and only the recorded voice of Mario Lanza to bring you solace. And your life will be shorter by 65 minutes. More serious yet. One, 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 one thing. Well, there is a perfectly good word for it, but reasons I can never understand, it's obscene. One um, act of indulgence, shall we say. <laughs> Equals in stress, running or loping across the Gobi Desert, carrying two dustbins stuffed with tasteless ivory bookends, with the Duke of Gloucester astride your shoulders, while teams of virile dwarves pummel your knees with short but sturdy staves. Those who sneer at statistics of this nature will realise the next time the lady wife tips one the nudge and mouths, woo-hoo, how about a tumble, then snookums over the afternoon of mints, their refusal will be much the more impressive if couched in scientific terms. Do you really, my good woman, fancy a lope across the Gobi with the bookends, the dustbins, the good duke and the abrasive dwarfies? Admittedly, if I believed one word of it, I would have died ten years ago. I may well have done, of course. I am a recording. Suffice it to say... 100% of all those who died in 1969, our latest figure, had at some stage in their life consumed water. I stole away her maidenhead with music soft and several gins. The magistrate has sent me down for robbery with violins.
Hello. <laughs> you know, this, this is a number I composed when I thought I was done forever with the burdens of high office. About, well, about a week ago. I'm going to find a bar, bar from life's iniquities where my favorite liquid is flowing like ambrosia. There, I'm going to find a chair where I can watch the passing fast while knocking back another glass of the dog that bit Miss hair. In some quiet backwater, nurtured by the landlord's daughter, unlimited beers, for three cheers, I'm free to be just sitting in the pub, rub shoulders with the Ignoscanty and make them sure I knock back plenty before they finally carry me out to first. I'm going to nurse my first. Far from men's impurities, having checked out first whose beer it is, I'm going to find a bar. My word, <laughs> that's a bit number ten in a matter of minutes. Ah, I love an old shag. Welcome to Literary Dog's Breakfast, a new programme about books. Today, as you may have gathered, we are talking to Come Along, Reuben, the drink is flowing like glue. <laughs> we are talking to Mr. Harold Wilson, in his capacity, not as a politician, but as author. Come on, fingers, give us a tune on the old Joanna. That's the fellow, melancholy baby. Mr. Wilson, your last book, Up Downing Street, was a bestseller. Have you another great novel raging in your breast? You know... When I first entered number 10 in 1966, or was it 1964, or was it not? I remember thinking out loud and starting the cat. By God, Harold, there's a book in this. And there was, a wrapped in good yarn. I admit I may have painted some of the characters with too broad a brush. George Wigg, the butler who did it, was almost unbelievable. Arthur Bottomley was, of course, wholly fictitious and bore no relation to any living person except Doris Bottomley and Patrick Gordon Walker. Many critics felt that George Brown the fading star of stage, screen and radio, who, behind the mask of comedy, desperately fought to hide another mask of comedy which kept falling off, belonged in some other work. And yet the tragic scene in which he was kicked upstairs to the strains of Nellie Dean brought tears to many an eye. It was a book rich in character. Mary, the poetic one who never counted the cost. Jim, the daft neighbour who couldn't count the cost and had to go. Barbara, the fiery redhead, too much, too soon. Roy, the sophisticated one, too little, too often. No, no, I can hardly wait to start on the sequel. Return to Downing Street. Already the, the breast to which you referred earlier is on fire. My God, it is too. Hey, look, hey, look here, would you mind pouring some of your second-hand ale on my fair aisle? Oh, oh, thank you. I see this book as the torrid tale of an old campaigner returning to the scene of former triumphs. He is surrounded by young bucks, eager to lock horns with him. Tony, the ambitious swashbuckler whose lust for power causes him severe brain damage on page 47. Dennis, the burly, rugged one, who takes on the old maestro and does himself a permanent mischief on page 53. Shirley, the tempestuous one, who knows what she wants and gets it in no uncertain manner on page 62. Roy, the smooth one, and all the other garlic-stained boogers who want to go into Europe and find they can't get out on page 74. Michael, the stroppy one, and all those bloody lefties and Trotskyites who in a search for a perfect world all jump off Westminster Bridge on page 75. <laughs> in the end, the old wizard stands alone and unaided and is crowned Queen of Europe by an itinerant band of Swiss gnomes in Westminster Abbey to the chairs of 57 million don't knows. I'll have an ounce of old twisted and uh, a pint of cooking, Edna. I'll be three pounds 47, my dear. Jesus Christ. Hello, holiday makers. Here we are with the holiday offer of a lifetime. With Belsons, you have wined and dined on Mulligan stew and enjoyed seven windlash days in Albuquerque. You've enjoyed our colourful holidays on the Costa del Living. Last year, you spent 78 days at sea in an open sampan under a Liberian flag of convenience due to a crock up at head office. But now, we proudly present 14 days at Gatwick. Relax in Gatwick's delightful lounges. It's seating, it's gay muzak, it's announcements. Spend happy hours waiting for drinks at one of the many enchanting bars. Lose that oh so tiresome luggage and enjoy the holiday of a lifetime. It was a wonderful holiday. One could lie on one's bench and see the world go by, and one was always bumping into people, always. The food was outstanding. So often abroad, one is served with foreign food, and unless armed with a box or two of the traveller's friend, can easily come unstuck. When one asks for a hot dog here, one gets a hot dog. And not Jack Russell Vindaloo, open the wind and run for the loo. <laughs> in this little quip. I shall never forget the many exciting walks. Some evenings, Ben and I would stroll along the promenade and look at Gate 8. Or sometimes, if the mood was upon us, Gate 9. 
On one occasion, we took a guided tour to Gate 26 and saw the whitening bones of some poor travellers who had lost themselves looking for Flight 2063 to Menorca. My word, not the ruins of Gate 37 rich in legend. Yes, get that high octane down your lungs. Book now for 14 days at Gatwick. Many stay longer. <laughs> Sitting in the bar, trying to shake off the shakes that start when I think of the takeoff. I don't want to fly, I'm too young to die, I hate flying. Plastic girls say, sorry, the plane is late, smiling still. They charge you overweight, they pack you in a crate and they send you freight. Oh, I hate flying. Oh, we like sheep are in the bar, knocking back the treble gins. Waiting to be herded off To left hand side you zip the limbs The announcers announce in 14 languages The plane's still late But a round of sandwiches is ours for free On B-O-A-C I hate flying Everybody else is calm Some are positively blase Wish that I could be like them To wear cop and fly kamikaze The gin has worked And nothing can disturb my sense of security Bring on the turbulence I don't give a hoot I'm pissed as a newt Where's my parachute? Extinguish your seatbelts Fasten your cigarettes Stand up the bastard who invented the jumbo jets Flying. Newts don't quack. Another, another large gin and a packet of 20, please. That will be £17.98, please, sir. And now to my love by Cyril Lord Tennyson. Oh, Winnie, gin-filled Winnie, I'm sorry, but say finny, since you cast away your mini, you can't do it with a maxi in the back seat of a taxi. <laughs> Advice to parents. I have received many letters this week about discipline, several of which I have referred to Brunhilde, German model, 4th floor, 107 Filth Street, Soho. But many ask the simple question, what can we do about two-and-a-half-year-old Brown and his appalling habit of constantly pouring hot soup over Rover, our parakeet? Well, it's no use nowadays in the current climate saying none of that, Master Brian, we shall stunt our growth or come off it, briny dear, cuff, cuff, if we persevere thus, we shall go blind off a sudden. I recommend a visit to your solicitor. Thus equipped, when two-and-a-half-year-old Brian next assaults your pet with hot soup, you can say, look here, Brian, old chap, Daddy is issuing writs, and any more tricks with the hot soup, and Daddy will leap upon you with the full panoply of the law. It's all so simple. It can cost as little as a thousand pounds for hard of hall, judges, barristers, costumes, scripts, and all the other wholly useless paraphernalia that makes the British legal system pay. Oh, festive tide, oh, jovial time, extol the joys of pantomime. Peruse the infant's bulging eyes, the curtain is about to rise. The orchestra, all damp with beer, has launched into the overture. The dusty drapes have dragged apart the panto. Is about to start. What spectacle? Let cynics wince. See how the chorus strut and mince. What ho, oh, the many villagers are sporting on the green. It is the opening number, traditionally clean. The sun is shining on jolly time green. Fa la la. And the lasses and lads all gaily convene. Fa la 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 la. To mingle and gamble and wrestle and thresh and sweatily indulge in the sins of the flesh. Let's all be obscene on jolly time green. Oh, pandemonium reigneth. Pray stop the children's ears, cover up their little eyes and stifle tiny cheers. Filthy, disgusting, rotten show. The audience get up to go. Then as a man, once more they sit. After all, it might get filthier yet. Hey, Dad, what's that? That's Idle Jack, pursuing an infomaniac. And who's that naked person there? That's the genie with the light brown pubic hair. The action now is fast and loose. The goose has goosed old Mother Goose. Simple Simon in a hat marked dunce is liberating women's fronts. And up there in the royal box, three bears molesting Goldilocks. The program says she was last unclad in Kenneth Tynan's old Aladdin. But got this part, now little noddies, put it round his anybody's. Now here comes Santa, ho, 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 look where he's hung his mistletoe. Amidst the willows, a rat and badger explain the mysteries of flagellation to the puzzled mole who's just enjoyed toad in the hole. 
But what is that compared to that which Dick is doing with his cat? Five miles from London and not a sign of pussy slaps ample thigh and exits left in pursuit of a few directorships. And upstage right with trip so airy enters an extremely wicked fairy. There's Baron Hardup giving his all. There's Humpty Dumpty on his wall. Enter Long John Silver on one leg. My God, he's going to lay the egg. And the prince is reviving the sleeping beauty well beyond the call of duty. But hold, what's this? The transformation. Dandini's had the operation. This should be the finale of finales. Prince Charming's revealed enormous Charlie's. Then, with not a blink in manner bold, up spake a precocious four-year-old. That boring bird and the lady in tights, will they now indulge in sapphic rites? This really is a turgid orgy. We've seen it all in Sister Georgie. Still, if this what pleases you adults. And back he went to the racing results. The moral of this story, if moral is the word, is that adults, like children, should be obscene but not absurd. <laughs> Merry Christmas, six jorums of reddish-type Bulgarian PD in a box of whiffs, please. That'll be £4,500, 26p, please. Shall we send it? Jesus Christ! Who's that, sir? And now, for all those dying of boredom in Leeds, we are privileged to present the Stars on Sunday Quartet. Mr James Mason, Miss Violet Carson, His Hugeness, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Lord Longford playing God Help You, Merry Gentlemen. <laughs> I'd just like now to tell you, if I may, about my latest release from the um, mobile FK unit for distressed gentle folk singers Bexley. This is it. I hope you like it. Those my guitar. Oh, my name. Great. As I stare at my reflection in the green bays of the blue tablecloth, I see a moth. And I cycle down the hill, it cool the sack I call my brain, it's full of rain. And the rude Caucasian sewer man explodes the rust and left leg of my soul and haunts my bowl. In a star crushed microcosm of the metamorphosis, Magellan sights, Arabian nights, and I can see pre Raphaelites illuminating on a PVC root screen. What might have been The billiard table is the world And all the balls should be grey And then war would go away Everybody could relax And there'd be no more potting blacks If all the balls were grey But there are black balls Balls, yellow balls, green balls, pink balls, white balls, balls of every color, glass and creed. Yes, there are black balls, brown balls, yellow balls, green balls, pink balls, white balls. It's no wonder that we need the very things for which we pray that all the balls will be gray. Well, look here. Ah, I would have complained before, but I put side two on first. 
Look here, if this is the sort of thing you're going to put out, and I'll tell you here and now, it sounds a bloody sight worse at 78 RPM. One? Not my bloody you daft old boot, count his. Look here, these are the sort of songs he's bringing this country into disrepute. I have every reason to believe that the fellow was long-haired and probably nude. My good lady, who has a keen ear for horseflesh, fancies she even detects the beard. And I back her against the Kaiser over 15 rounds, giving a fair wind and a British referee. No small wonder there's so much violence and bad language. Bloody hell, the chaps will be horsewhipped. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that the fellow is on the substances. Edward VII wasn't. He had a damn good war. And a damn good cod war, too, and a damn good cod piece. Pip, 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 be quiet! We don't want to be reminded constantly of how beastly things are today. It's not easy for any of us. If you tried to buy a crate of Dom Perignon 87 in Harrods on a Saturday morning, I was the nude man in the Masonic apron, so I know my onion. I'm going to put on something decent. Pip, pip, pip. Shut up, woman! What is it that Britain has created, of which all foreigners most jealous be? What assails your ears in both the hemispheres and is said and done by them and you and me? That word, that word, that old four-letter word, it stands for something beautiful, yet to the point and brief. It doesn't take long to say it, but it brings intense relief. That word, that word, that old four-letter word, it stood by Tommy through the years, fought every decent cause. From classroom to the Khyber Pass, it's won a dozen wars. Yet some cry out on hearing it, let he who said it rue it. We don't say that in front of our wives, we doubt if they even do it. That word, that word, that Anglo-Saxon word, it fills that necessary blank. What would we do without it? Obscene, perhaps, but British, no wonder that we shout it. That word, that word, that wonderful one, two, three, four-letter word. Leap. Hello? Hello? What word? What's this word, eh? Something filthy, eh? Something disgusting? Beep, beep, beep. What's your language, woman? The only word that stood by me through the years, man and boy, and what I am today is waiter. And that has seven letters, none of which have ever been answered. My wife and I certainly draw the line at four-letter words like that. Not to mention this. This off you, that is a phrase you never hear bandied round our parlour. Thank you very much. Not at all. Any friend of Enox is a friend of mine. Hello? Hello? What about, what about something educational? And I don't mean sex. All the time, it's sex, 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 rammed down your pinstripes. All they ever taught me about sex was how to draw maps on the backs of rabbits. Sybil and I have never been blessed with this, you. <laughs> There they are, there they are. Doesn't your heart skip a beat? Welcome to the home, the regimental headquarters of the Royal Army Horticultural Corps, Wheatcroft Barracks, Kittering. Today we are speaking in our series, It's a Man's Life Bashing Arabs, to Colonel O.P.F. Prendergast, to his officer commanding the R.E.H.C. Colonel, perhaps first you could tell us something of the history of the Corps. Certainly. <coughs> Can you hear me at the back? No, no, I can't. Thank God for that. I'm a master of flatulence. I'm going to tell you one or two things about the Royal Army Horticultural Corps. Thank you. Perhaps we could seize this moment while the regimental band head towards the allotments. A pair of their alarming crows. Alas, uh, their ranks have been sadly depleted by ground elm disease and them green fly. I'm going to tell you one or two things about the Royal Army Horticultural Corps, the second city of London, herbaceous borderers, best known, of course, as the Greenfingers. They were founded at the end of the last century out in India by a major general who found that his native servants were devouring his rhododendrons, of which he was intensely proud. Then, intoxicated by the plants, waving their manhoods about him, their manhoods being the small goatskin caps they affected on festival days, so incensed was the general by this that he formed the corps. And since then, they have scattered their seed upon the ground all over the place, from the poppies of Flanders, tallest on the left, shortest on the right, to the finely mulched jungles of Borneo and Aldershot. Now, why I hear you saying, am I wearing purple boots? Well, this is a tradition which dates back to the early days in India, when such was the poor quality of the local claret. Grapes were laid out on the parade ground, and the entire court would march up and down, treading out quite a decent little light table wine. Now, why I hear you ask, and no wonder, am I wearing trousers? Well, it is only in full ceremony that I am privileged not to wear the trouser. This is a battle honour which dates back to the last war in the desert, 
when the RAF, the Royal Air Force, were in a spot of bother. And the gardener, entirely on his own initiative, removed his trouser and with only a pull through created a ruled windsock. And the Queen, or the King as she then was, gave them this battle honour of which we are so intensely pride. Beneath the regimental crest, Colonel, the pot of lobelia, the crossed spade and regulation four-pronged war box fork, I see the, um, the motto, post equos venomous, we come after the horses. I have seen the corps at work, strategic pruning and bedding, a platoon assault and a pocket of thrip. What a tremendous sight to see the gardeners moving in in close formation, spraying from the hip on Johnny Thrip. It was particularly stirring, Colonel, to see the lads wipe out a well-defended position occupied by an almost overwhelming force of ragworts and God knows what. And um, all seemed lost, I thought, at first, Colonel, until you yourself, with at great personal risk, picked up a tiny Scots cook and, biting off his sporran, hurled in rage with gritty little chef into the seemingly impregnable ranks of old man's nuisance. Um, what carnage resulted? Any casualties? Unfortunately, we lost two chaps causing a diversion in the um, market garden without gas masks. Stand by your beds, gardeners! Thank you, Sergeant Major. Carry on. Right, lads, weeding drill. On the command, Hwah! press the left heel firmly in the bed beside a bending weed and grasp the nettle firmly between the thumb and forefinger of the right hand. Ah. On the command, two. Sir, sir. Yes, gardener. That's the damn you. And so off marched the corps, their stately lobelias swaying proudly in the wind. Bravo, lads! Hello again. This is what we want. That's decent, clean, wholesome stuff, the sort of thing that makes one proud to be British. Either my watch has stopped or the lupins are late this year. Hello? Hello, hello, hello! Hello. Um, a post office engineer there, so I'm afraid there's been a slight mishap on the line, so while we attend to it, we you care to hear some light music? The mass bands of the post office engineers playing selection of Swiss from uh, Chu Chin Chow? Or... Certainly not! Oriental garbage. This is something we can dance to. That's what we look to our gramophone for. <laughs> From the world covered English, the code of the English has been sharply divided in two. There are those lower left who are ill-bred and red, and us up to the right who bleed to blue. We bleed blue. No, we bleed blue. Blue blood whistles through our veins. You never believe that we can leave blue blood stains. We bleed blue. Do we, we bleed blue? Blood shot after too much booze. Surprise, surprise, surprise our eyes. The blue is the blues. I want some blue roses for a red faced lady. A blue room for two. When it comes to the crunch, which is just after lunch, royal blues are beautiful hues. All our tunes are blue, moons are blue. Blue blood runs through every tube. Such is our phlegm, we call the Thames the blue blue Danube. A knight of the garter is picked for his arteries, they have to bleed blue. The purple or green or ultramarine, it's true. We are curious blue. Hearts of oak are blue. Jokes are blue. Blue corpuscles pull you through. The cheese that rarely pleases is the bluest of blue. We've never bled cardinal red, buffalo beige, beer age, chrome yellow, silly fellow, emerald green, don't be obscene, heliotrope, not a hope, amethyst, have to be pissed, indigo, no, 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 no. Hello. Boy.
Bonsoir la France. Mesdames, Messieurs, faites vos jours sans frontières. Je vous adresse ce soir au sujet de notre entrée dans le ou la marché commune, nous allons. Ici, nous sommes. Pendant 700 années, nous avons eu la guerre avec vous. Et toujours pour nous la victoire. Pendant 700 années, nous n'avons pas vous aimé, les Grenouilles, aux Frogs. Pendant 700 années, nous avons dit les Wogs commencent à Calais. Pendant 700 années, nous avons toujours gagné l'European Test de football. Maintenant, tout ça, c'est oublié. Maintenant, nous sommes dans la marche. Maintenant, les choses lisées aura les Branches, de Marks and Spencers, le Woolworths, les Sainsbury's et W. A. Schmidt, les stationneurs. Maintenant, vous allez enjoyer les licensing laws grand britannique. Ton gentillon, s'il vous plaît. Nous avons entré l'Europe. Où sont mes intervalles pour moi? <laughs> Ma petite blague. Prenez garde de Milord Soames. Il est très gros, admettons-moi. Mais any trouble est bosh. Pardon, Deutschland. Ein Schuldigen sehr bitter. Adieu, Nouvelle-Zélande, votre beurre et votre fromage. Adieu, les Indies de l'Ouest, votre souk, vos immigrants. Adieu, Australie, le cricket et les kangaroos, le nom de plume de ma tante. Maintenant, c'est Allo Europe. Dans mon cœur, je suis européen, comme vous pouvez entendre. Philippe, dear, will it affect my standing? Not if you take a little water with it, darling. Beaucoup de personnes pensent que je suis un poisson froid. Mais non, il y avait une femme dans ma vie. Muriel, Muriel, ah, oh, mais tu es très belle et quand je t'ai vu la première fois, j'ai dit que la voix c'est comme les hirondelles, je te l'or et what the hell, Muriel, la mademoiselle pour moi. Muriel, Muriel, a t'adoré, c'est naturel et aussi à te suivre, je crois déjà pense que va être avec de la bonne chance, un homme les vaincra la France, Muriel, la mademoiselle pour moi. Belle et moi, si beau, dans les mots de Monsieur Pompidou, elle met à l'eau. Muriel, Muriel, il y a un small hotel, et peut-être sous les toits, vous me direz que nous serons toujours amicales et vivre longtemps cordial. Muriel, la mademoiselle, pour moi, le clair de la lune dans le marché commune. Muriel, la mademoiselle, And in reply to your second question, I think it's more than likely that now we are in Europe, we shall be arming the traffic wardens. Uh, next question, please. Hello? 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 Ah, <clears throat> look here. Look, I've been on the continent for the odd weekend. Le weekend, as the French have it, or le dirty weekend, as the French actually have it, as they have it a damn sight more often than we do. What chance now of a British Pope? Good question. There are obviously going to be considerable job opportunities sur le continent, as waiters, waitresses, traffic wardens, and indeed, um, popes. The pope is, of course, the most eligible bachelor in the world, which most of us aren't, and those who are are prime minister. And no one wants to see a married pope, with a little woman popping up with an I say, Pius XXIII, do you remember those beastly murals in the Sistine Chapel? I've had them emulsioned in papal puce. And why don't you, um parachute the Swiss Guard into Northern Ireland. Look, uh, look here, uh, this is not entirely uh, what we want. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, this is your uh, dial a breather service. You saucy article, are you wearing a rubber Macintosh? I love you. I love you. <laughs> I would like to grasp you by the turn up, sir. Hello. Hello. Look here. <clears throat> I can see very few job opportunities for Britons in Rome. And what on earth is this coming up next? It's an oily-looking person of Italian at stock. Is there no end to it? Throw out the Roman spring out of the Mrs. Stone. Throw a weary in summer till October. I bring a little to Latin to the great ones of Manhattan. For wealthy widows as they watch the figure go. Say, let's get down to Napoli and grab ourselves a gigolo.
fornicazione is Italian for love copulazione sent from heaven up above frustrazione flutters in there with the lines I bring sensazione for a fountain full of coins and when the summer's over And I'm sick of the flesh pots And I know that a fresh lot's Not to do until the spring I burn at the hole I just kiss them all goodbye Out of an empty The one and the hole To see Napoli and lie And when the winter's over And it's back to the grindstone To the meat and the rhinestone And no sleepless nothing Better take precaucione She may not be past her prime Ah, 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 but she only Cost a million a time Love should be free But in Napoli It's a profession without a pension And they call me Stony Tony If they ever turn to act speciale In seminazzi The trouble with this country today Is they're not casting men in the heroic mold As of your casting, please note Vast men we used to do Great, snorting, red-faced heroes who could only be decently clad by soft furnishings. Men who could lead an expedition against some recalcitrant Tibetan llamas of a morning and still shoot 87 on the old Royal Laza golf course prior to tiffin. Look at old W.P. Bread. Now there was a hero. Eaton, Harrow, Winchester, Balliol, Wadham, Gamora, Christchurch, played cricket for England, rugby for Wales and football for the highest bidder. For some years he held the world 400-yard tango record. When I remember the Union Jack, so proudly emblazoned on his sporting brief, ran, so heavy was his perspiration, into a purple badge of courage. He turned down the kingship of Bulgaria on the grounds it would have interfered with his winning of the Grand National on the stout freckled back of Dame Nellie Melba. The epitome of the English gentleman, who, but for a misguided attempt to vault up Everest, the pole snapped on the South Col and Fortnum's had packed a faulty hamper, would have been a hundred again on Wednesday. Still he died as many of us would have wished to live, shouting the complete works of Horace, the startled shepherd. Would that some of the tiny men at the helm today would take the decent way out. Old W.P. Bread would have left a loaded luger in the smoking room. There's only one way out for an English gentleman. Where is it? A veritable Odysseus he was. Adulterous, but a stickler for punctuality. Where did you say? Thank you, thank you. I admit that I have rarely loved, honoured, or obeyed But I've always crawled back to the marital sack No matter where I've strayed And Penelope, I'm marrying you And what more could any man do? I confess I have lived other lives Other ladies have been laid But the cat survives if the other eight lives Miss the final accolade And Penelope, I'm married you And what more could any man do? My life has an ex-certificate for adulterers only But like a disease, I think of you in it The good times when I am lonely I admit it's hard to justify Mother Nature's mistress plan But if the wife goes mad, it's terribly bad But it's different for a man And Penelope, I'm married you And what more could any man do? My slide is twice as risky as mine has got the splinter But like a disease, I'm hideously promiscuous Especially in winter, I admit it's hard to justify Mother Nature's mistress plan But this particular sin isn't feminine But it's manly for a man And Penelope, I married you And what more could any man do? Minister of Sport, Minister, do you think politics should be mixed with sport, Sports Minister? No. 
Otherwise, I, I would never have taken the job on. You're thinking probably of South Africa. And I remember in 1943 advocating quite loudly that simply because politically we were not entirely au fait with Herr Hitler, that should not in any way be allowed to interfere with the tour of the German cricket side. But it's everywhere, isn't it? Politics in sport. I mean, look at footer. It's all a cock. Violence all over the place. Don't blame the players as a whole for the hacking and bludgeoning. It's small pockets of ruthless and dedicated left-wing rowdies, mooists and Trotskyites, hell-bent on destroying the pattern of play as we know and love it. But what, what, Minister, about the um, exorbitant price of footballers? Funnily enough, I wanted to buy a footballer for my wife for Christmas. But like everything else, um, gazump, gazump. And I, I feel that this is a problem for local authorities. What about sponsorship? In its proper place. Perhaps David Bedford could have stubbed out his cigarette to advantage prior to embarking on the last lap of the 10,000 metres. Cricket, of course, is stiff with it. Cigarette manufacturers, razor blade people, makers of heavy black stout, thus giving the impression that cricket is a game for chain-smoking, heavily bearded Irish pisspots. Will you name names, Minister? No, but they're printed quite clearly on the tennis rackets I carry everywhere. One has to earn a crust. I mean, can you honestly say that you could pass a sex test at 7,000 feet? Who, Minister, do you blame for the sad state of sporting Britain? David Coleman, particularly when he's smiling. But those bloody action replays. Could we hear that again, Minister? David Coleman, particularly when he's smiling. With those bloody action replays. All in all, right? Thank you, Minister. Perhaps you would care to pick a record. I already hold one. The Japanese high jump. It is admittedly only two foot seven inches, but they are a small, proud people and terribly game. Every word they say about Madame Butterfly is an utter lie. That Captain Pinkerton did her wrong. Several people see Senior Putinius, one find I a genius, but he never showed what everybody knows that Madam Butterfly was just a pro in downtown Tokyo. Oh, 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 oh. She was a fly by night, a floozy too in downtown Nagasaki. That old malaki was a bent. She had a yen for men, but her true intent was the ten yen those men meant. She was a yellow hot mama too, too low down Nipponese who used to nip her knees all night. She used to pay the rent and give fifty percent to that great out parasite, Monsieur Butterfly, Monsieur Butterfly. He was an old school Jap with some old school ties Not quite normal as his name implies But he set her on her feet oh, 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 With the Emperor Hero Heat oh, 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 And the whole American fleet oh, oh, oh. She used to pose kimono less for most unsavory pictures From rags to rickshaws was her rise Under Mount Fujiyama in her see-through pajama For it pays to advertise the Seven Samurai used butterfly. It pays to advertise. Tell me, Mrs. Fu Manchu, is the rumor really true? Is it north to south, like all the rest, or inscrutable east to decadent west? And now, for Cyril and Deirdre Armin of Kampala, Uganda, for Reg and Myrtle Mobutu, of the Congo, for Jim and Bessie Bakazi of 12 the buildings, the Central African Republic, for the late Dr. Nkrumah, Errol of Ghana, and for Adolf and Elsie Vorster of Cape Town, South Africa. If traffic wardens laughed, if bishops turned somersaults, Harold Wilson did the splits, or Alex Hume would shout out kicks and leap into the waltz. The world would be a better place if stockbrokers smiled. If generals did Catherine wheels. If 
Someone could persuade the queen to go into a tap routine or keep performing seals. <laughs> the world would be a better place if barristers burp. <laughs> Policemen use trampolines. If Nixon danced round in the nude, the Pope would bless the multitude in a beard and beads and jeans. The world would be a better place if newsreaders sang, if ministers wore miniskirts, if Heath would only realise his face was made for custard pies, and otherwise it hurts. The world would be a better place if disc jockeys died, if judges juggled billiard balls, if Enoch Powell would only stick to writing the odd limerick for laboratory wars, the world would be a better place. If the Almighty spoke, if God would only advertise that he was being satirical, the world is not a miracle, but a great big dirty joke. A far, far better place. Hello, hello, hello. Excuse me, sir. Is this your LP? Would you mind coming along noisily, please, sir, so I can put the boot in? I've been as far as Orpington, Tufnell Park, and Golders Green, seen the northern lights of Arlesden, and visited East Sheen. I've travelled out to Onga on the dear old Central Line. I even went to Ricelip in 1949. I've been far south as Tooting Beck, where sheep may safely graze. And I sometimes think it's hard to say where I'd like to end my days. But then I shout, oh Arthur, what a burk you are. There's a little place you love just off the north, said the They call it... Please done, you won't be sorry that you're breezing. The perfect lights and yellow lines, the illuminated signs, all say welcome to the borough that everybody's pleasing. Please done, where the birds sing in the trees done. You can hear the blackbirds too, so why not take the bikeroo? It'll work out that much cheaper if you buy a seize done. After the show, why not take a stroll down Neaton High Street and turn right into Millets in the Selfridge Road. Or pop into the Public Library and browse at your leisure in the many newspapers on display. Then why not dawdle in the neon lit Laundorama? Only 3p for as much as £4 of assorted bandwidth or spend a carefree evening at the Ran of Cups, the Neesden Curry Emporium. European and continental dishes a speciality. Neesden, where the results are decreased then. Oh, where there's bingo and boutiques and the winners last the weeks and very tasty too with a slice of cheese in Neesden. Who could want a better reason? Ah, oh, you will not fail the thrill when you hear a Dolly's Hill that the next stop on the line is the place that I call mine. If it's Sodom or Gamara, now it's Sodom Barra Neesden. We are now to hear Schubert's quintet, The Trout, played on this record by E. Musici di Nisden. Thank you. 
Oh, you're a 